family groups. These were Homo sapiens, modern people. They were us. Their numbers were few, and from Africa, they had begun to spread slowly across the world. But Asia was already occupied, home to a different human species, Homo erectus. Erectus was a fascinating species. It lasted for a very long time. It's really the longest lived human species we know about. <laughs> These are people that are being very mobile uh, in open country to get to their food uh, and often to get to their food ahead of the competition. So in that sense, they're very like us in terms of uh, their overall body shape and body build. similar, any chance of a peaceful coexistence between Homo sapiens and Homo erectus was shattered by a cataclysmic event that took place over 2,000 miles away. The eruption of Mount Toba in Southeast Asia. 74,000 years ago, it erupted on a scale that no human had experienced before or since. It's certainly the largest volcanic eruption of the last two million years and erupted a huge amount of material. And because of its magnitude, it's being classed as a, a super volcanic eruption. The fallout from the eruption extended as far as the Indian subcontinent. We've got areas, particularly in East India, where the ash reaches six metres in thickness. Ash fall from the eruption filled the atmosphere with toxic chemicals, turning rain to acid that poisons lakes and rivers, intensifying the struggle for survival. In the aftermath of Based on the latest archaeological and scientific evidence, this is a dramatization of a world forged by the Toba eruption. A time which shaped the fates of two different but closely related species, us and them. Leave it. Water! Wait! Buckle, wait! Drink. Don't drink it. What are you doing? How do you know the water is good? People were here. They lived here. Why do you think they left? <coughs> the people. Did they go to the mountain for clean water? These are not people. As the once lush Indian landscape turned to desert, clean water became scarce and increasingly hard to find. Yeah, Freddie May. In the aftermath, human numbers fell dramatically. We were threatened with extinction. In India, the struggle to survive would have been particularly harsh. This was Erectus territory. For thousands of years, Erectus had been one of Asia's most successful predators. The arrival of modern humans would have threatened their world. 
and we're talking a different species. Of She's sleepy. She needs water. What are they if they're not people? All I know, I know from stories. And from my father. They move fast, like us. They hunt. They kill. If someone comes near, they will snap a twig. Your mother will hear. You will hear them. I will come with you. Stay with your mother. She needs you. If I do not return, keep our family alive. have made formidable opponents. This is a cast of a thigh bone or femur of Homo erectus from Africa. It tells us Homo erectus was similar to us below the neck. More particularly, this ridge on the back of their thigh bone, this is a cluster, and it grows in response to running. People today who have similar kinds of, of uh, ridges on their, on their femurs and have femurs of similar sorts of shape like this tend to be very good runners. I and mean, we're talking about people who are Olympic athletes. If they were around today chasing people around, you'd be in trouble. These guys were like wolves with knives. With bodies beautifully evolved for running, Erectus were the first human species to hunt big game. To begin with, uh, Erectus was scavenging, so picking up the, the, the meat from other animals that had done the killing. Uh, but by the end of their time, they were certainly big game hunters and were capable of big game hunters. Hunting big prey would have required Erectus to work cooperatively in packs. Oh! 
burning carnivores at the very top of the food chain. dressing up. For our ancestors, they had a much more important role. Recent human cultures with others. Where's your father? He went to find water. They took him. Who took they him? They seal. Did they seal? Did they seal? The ability to track evolved with the ability to hunt. Homo erectus were the first humans to systematically track their prey using scent, sight, and sound. Their large brains could interpret signs, work out the movements of their prey, making them deadly hunters. Our ancestors, however, had a significant advantage. We have learned to anticipate the thoughts and behaviors of others and use that knowledge to outsmart them. Find your footprints where you get down. Step in them backwards. Backwards. Keep going. There is no evidence that Homo erectus made spears. Even if they had, they couldn't have used them the way we do. Their palms faced forwards, instead of hanging sideways, as with modern humans. So even if they had invented the spear, they may not have been able to throw it. In the hands of our ancestors, the spear became a very effective weapon. Not with a spear. Point is sharp. Hmm. Point is sharp. Throw a spear once. Then what? Keep watch. At some point in the distant past, they developed something very new. Slingshot, like the spear, gave our ancestors the ability to strike and kill from a distance. Um, if you get a small animal like this, it's like, hey, you and I with a car. It'll, it'll crush bones, it'll stop it in its tracks. This is a weapon that allows you to go after birds in flight, rabbits on the move, deer, creatures like this. It also has value as an offensive weapon in warfare. David and Goliath 
You know, these things are really dangerous. You know, no joke. You know, um, even even against in, in modern conflicts, people armed with these things have been known to kill other people. It can cause devastating injuries. I mean, one of these things against a limb will break a bone. Against your head, it could kill you. In the 1.8 million years Homo erectus had been on the planet, their weapons technology hadn't progressed beyond the hand axe. A highly effective, multi-purpose weapon, it was portable, simple to make, easy to replace, and the perfect tool to cut, sever, and smash. But it was limiting in one crucial way. To kill, Erectus had to get close. For the first time, Homo erectus faced competition from a species who weren't bigger, stronger, or more numerous, but who simply thought about things in a different way. It's what they've got. You drink bad water. Fragments of fossilized ostrich egg shells from the Tar Desert in India suggest that our ancestors may have used these eggs to store and transport water, just as the San Bushmen in Africa have been doing for centuries. This ability to plan ahead was something our hominid rivals lacked. Homo oh, sapiens brain is about a third larger than Homo erectus brain. And that, that tells you something. Brains are expensive tissues. They t cost a lot of calories to grow up a big brain. So there has to be some payoff for that extra brain. We think the payoff for Homo sapiens is more complex thought, that they're able to plan more complex activities, that they're able to store more information. Homo erectus wasn't stupid, but Homo sapiens may have had some key advantages as, as a consequence of having a larger, more complex brain. Another advantage we had was language. Differences between our and their linguistic abilities can be seen by comparing skulls. The part of the brain that, that, that controls language and speech production is located right around here. And you can see these parts of, of the Homo sapiens brain very much enlarged. That part of the skull bows outward quite a bit. And so there's more brain in that part of the head. On the corresponding part of Homo erectus skull, the brain is relatively small. So the, the Homo erectus brain is not devoting a lot of space to the, the uh, parts of the brain that control language and speech. One of the crucial elements of Homo sapiens adaptations is that it combines complex planning, developed in the front of the brain here, with language, with the ability to spread complex plans from one individual to the other individual to the other in individual. Where's it from? Far from here. Before they came and chased us out. Us? You were with others. My son, his wife, their baby boy. Enough. Don't drink it all. There's more water nearby. No, there isn't. 
Here, on higher ground. There's been no rain. But father said that... Father when... was wrong. There is no water here. Not away from the rock. Across the sand. There is water. More water than you can imagine. How do you know? My father told me. came from the water. Inside there is food. Not in that one, not now. There is no food on this mountain. But at the water, there is more food than you can eat. Imagination. The ability to visualize what can't be seen would prove another defining advantage for our species. Like us, Erectus are believed to have lived in small family groups. There is evidence that they cared for each other and looked after the sick and injured. There are some hints that may, they may have had a, a sense of compassion, comparable to the things we feel about one another. There are fossils from the site of Denisi in Georgia that hint at this. One fossil in particular had, had lost all of its teeth, either to an infection or to old age or to both. And this individual was so severely handicapped that it would have had to have assistance. Someone would have, some other member of its group would have had to help it basically chew its food in order for this individual to survive. Erectus moved around in search of food and rarely settled for any length of time. They were using the landscape, they were traveling from one place to another, and they were probably gathering resources, gathering, you know, plants, and they were occasionally, obviously, butchering animals. So these were, in a sense, small groups of hunters and gatherers. But after the Tobra eruption, there was not much left to gather. Ash killed off vegetation, leaving little in the way of fruit, nuts, and tubers to eat. Meat would have been highly valued. No food. Me? We must leave. What about father? Forget your father. We must wait for him. <laughs> wait. Tonight we stay here. What? This is where he will come. He will not come. He's a brave man. He's strong. At first light, you go. With or without him.
Bato. Bato. Olha. Like other large predators, Erectus were territorial, hunting within boundaries and defending their territory from other competition. She left this. Territory based on high ground would have been especially prized because it makes spotting prey easier. So far down our reach. The others. Anything that strayed into their territory would have been treated as food. Recent studies suggest that erectus were infected by tapeworms, which you get from eating raw meat. It seems that erectus liked his food red and bloody, even though he could have cooked it. They were here. Where are they now? On some occasions, Homo erectus's hunger for meat seems to have got the better of them. The fossilized remains of an erectus found in Kenya show signs of vitamin A poisoning, probably caused by eating too much animal liver. Excessive vitamin A causes tissue around bones to tear and bleed. This person would have been in agony for months. To survive as long as they did, they must have been cared for by other members of the group.
message. It's yours now. have eaten a homo sapiens given a chance my guess is yeah they probably didn't view each other as members of the same species and just as humans today will occasionally eat chimpanzees as bush meat well homo erectus may have felt the same way about homo sapiens they may also have been cannibals homo erectus bones have been discovered with cut marks suggesting that the flesh was prized off the skeleton. A unique and crucial development of every human species was to harness the power of fire. Erectus were the first human species to use fire. Time's the currency of evolution. You know, if you have more time, you can do more things. You can do, you can do the same thing or you can experiment and do different things. But it's all underwritten by having time. And fire is one way of providing that kind of time. And without fire, you're not human. Both species used fire for warmth and to cook and dry meat. Cooking makes meat a more digestible substance. So it reduces the amount of time one has to spend chewing, frees you up to do other things. But our ancestors were the first to exploit its full range of possibilities.
When they left Africa, our ancestors most likely followed the coastline as they moved into Arabia, India, Southeast Asia, and beyond. Close to the sea, they were guaranteed food and fresh water, flowing from rivers into the sea. But after Toba, their ability to range freely was dramatically curtailed. Them or us? Does it matter? Mother. To escape from this eruption-ravaged land, our ancestors faced a huge problem. The Tar Desert. It forms a long natural barrier between the Indian interior and the sea. It has been there for hundreds of thousands of years, growing and contracting in response to the changing climatic conditions. After Toba, the desert dramatically expanded. So this would have brought colder and you might have thought that a desert, hundreds of miles wide, would have trapped any humans in the Indian interior. But there is archaeological evidence that people did attempt to make the journey across it. How much further? Keep walking. How far? Thank you. 
No one can be quite sure how our ancestors made it. Perhaps by finding water in dry riverbeds, as many indigenous people in Africa and Asia still do today. Even in apparently dry riverbeds, after long droughts, water can still be found in underground reservoirs beneath the sand. If you know where to look. The ability to find water in the dry times would have been invaluable knowledge passed down the generations. And all rivers, dry or flowing, eventually lead to the sea. Archaeologists working in Jawaharlal in India have found the sort of stone tools made by modern humans buried beneath a thick layer of toba ash. Alongside our tools were those of Homo erectus. Above the ash, only our tools are found. <laughs> 